So what do you think? Why did Jesus speak in parables? Why didn't he just come right out and say what he meant? Why do you think Jesus taught in these parables? And how do you think people understood the parables in the day Jesus lived in? Welcome to the Gospel Message Radio Program. On today's program, we're going further into the book of Mark, and we're going to start with the parables of Jesus Christ, and specifically, the parable of the sower. We've seen much in the book of Mark about the actions of Jesus, how he was baptized, tempted, preached his first sermon, how he healed the sick and had a heart for those in need, and how he stood up to those that used the law to control others. And now we're about to go into a portion of Mark where we find some teaching of Jesus, parables of Jesus. Now Mark does not have quite as many as some of the other gospel books, but because we're going through the book of Mark, we want to go through those teachings and see what we can learn, things that touch our heart today in 2022, and see why Jesus taught in parables. What does this parable of the sower actually mean, and how can we apply it to our life today. My name is Wes Hepner. Thanks for being here today on this radio program. Before we go into our text, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, this opportunity to share your word. I pray for each listener that you would prepare their heart, that your spirit would work in their lives. Lord, I pray that you would guide each word that is said on this program, that it may be to honor and glorify you, and people may be drawn to you. I pray, Jesus, for anyone that is hurting today, struggling today, maybe in depression today. Lord, I pray that you would uplift them, that you would shower them with your love and hold them in your right hand as you promised to do in your word. Thank you again for this opportunity to share your word on this radio program. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The story you are about to hear is one of the most important stories Jesus tells. And that's not just my opinion. In our text in Mark, he says, if you don't know this parable, how will you know all the other parables? It's in verse 13. Jesus is about to tell us the parable of the farmer who goes and plants the seeds in the field. All the other parables will not make sense if you don't get this one. And it's such an important parable and there's so much in it. I actually want to take two radio programs to explain this parable and to go through it. So it's crucial for the Holy Spirit to open up the parable of the farmer to you. And if you don't understand this, a lot of what Jesus says will not make sense to you. So let's open our Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 4, and we're going to read the first 20 verses. I'd love it if you'd read with me. It says, He began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and he said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on the stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And others fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, They that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without all these things are done in parables, that seeing they might see and not perceive, and hearing they might hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on the stony ground, who when they had heard the word, immediately received it with gladness and have no root in themselves. 
and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among the thorns, such as hear the word. And in the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. And that's as far as we're going in our text today. So Jesus wants to teach the people, but there's so many that he goes on a boat. And he sits down on a boat while the people remain on the shore. And according to tests conducted by archaeologists and sound engineers, a single person standing in a boat anchored offshore at that location could be heard clearly by an audience of several thousand people. So this is a perfect place for Jesus to teach the massive crowd that has gathered. So what is a parable? The word parable literally means to come alongside or place alongside. So the idea is you have two things and you put them side by side so you can contrast and compare them. That way you can examine them, evaluate them, and think more about them accurately. A parable is usually a story that is an object lesson. It sometimes takes something physical like farming and lays it beside something spiritual, God's truth, so you can examine it, think about it, and understand it. Some people have said a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So Jesus is about to give us an object lesson that will help you see all the object lessons he gives later much clearer. From this point on, parables will be Jesus' primary means of teaching the crowds. And so the purpose of parables was to clarify truth to believers. Jesus begins this parable in verse 3 by saying, listen. And from here on in the Gospel of Mark, this listen will appear 40 times. All the miracles that Jesus did were for the purpose of proving who he was so we would listen to what he says. Every time Jesus says listen, he's about to say something important and he doesn't want us to miss it. So are you listening? The parable is about to begin. Let's start with a farmer. Verse 3, a farmer went out to plant some seed. Now the parable's main point is actually the ground where the seed lands, but the farmer's got to plant the seed for there to be a crop. And in those days, farmers didn't plant wheat or other grain crops in rows like we see today. They broke the ground and softened the soil with a plow and then scattered the seed by hand. Or exactly the opposite, they would cast the seed and then plow it into the soil. The farmer would have a bag around his waist and throw the seed out with his hand. And his field might be bordered on one side by a fence row covered with thickets and briar brushes and bordered on another side by a footpath or road into town. And even when he tried to conserve seed, some seed landed where it could not grow. So who is the farmer and what does he do? What's it a picture of? Verse 14, the sower soweth the word. The seed represents the word of God. And the farmer represents anyone who shares God's word with others. This means anytime you're sharing something spiritual, godly, biblical, you're spreading the seed. If you're giving biblical counsel to someone, you are the farmer planting God's word. If you're a parent talking to your child about God's word, you are the farmer planting God's truth. If you are a student talking to one of your friends about the Bible, you are the farmer planting God's word. If you're a missionary or a pastor or a youth leader and you're sharing and teaching God's word, you're the farmer planting God's word. And the question for you is, are you a farmer? How often do you sow? Some of us sow very sparsely. We rarely ever sow. We think it's the work of others to sow, and then we wonder why we are not blessed and why our life is a mess. The Bible clearly states that what you sow, that you will reap. So as a child of God, you are a farmer. But this parable is not actually about the farmer. It's about the ground. Jesus wants his disciples and us to know that as we share the gospel, as we give biblical counsel and talk to others about the kingdom of God, it will be received differently by different people. We should not be surprised by this. We know it's the truth. 
But sometimes I think when we share, we get so discouraged when it's not received the way we think it should be received. So Jesus is preparing his disciples and us today to expect four basic responses to God's truth. And it's the hard heart, the shallow heart, the divided heart, and the fruitful heart. So let's go into this first one, this hard heart. And again, I think we'll just get to the first one today. And the hard heart is found in verse 4 and the explanation in verse 15. It says, And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And the explanation in verse 15 and these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown, and when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. So at this time when Jesus was telling this parable, a lot of the farmland was outside of the villages and towns, and there were just paths that went through these fields connecting one village with another. And on these paths, animals and people would walk, small wagons would be pulled, and this path would become hard, almost like a cement sidewalk. And as the farmer would be throwing out the seeds, some of it would land on these paths, on these footpaths. And birds looking for an easy meal would simply follow the farmer and eat the seeds that fell on these paths. Jesus is saying, that is what some people are like when they hear God's word or the gospel or receive biblical counsel. They've made their heart so hard, it doesn't really get to the inside of them. Some people are hostile, and even some are polite and just agree with everything you're saying. But it's not getting to their heart. I've had this experience myself where I share the gospel, and the person says, yes, yes, that sounds great, but you can tell it's not reaching their heart. God's truth just bounces off of them. So what caused them to become so hard? Maybe it's life has been hard. And made them hard, their own pride, disappointments in life with God and with others. It could be a host of things, but the bottom line is they have no interest in the things of God. And because of this, they're easy prey for Satan's kingdom. He comes along and takes the seed away. In other words, as soon as they hear it, they ignore it or forget it and go on their own way. In summary, the footpath. Where some of the seeds falls represents a hard heart. Those who have heard God's word, but resist it, ignore it, have no interest in it. They may see the truth of God. Like we saw when the scribes and Pharisees accused Jesus of having the spirit of Beelzebub. They saw that Jesus was God. They heard his teaching. They could see his miracles, but they did not believe. They had made their hearts so hard it didn't matter what was in front of them, they weren't going to listen. And so their hard heart was an example of this footpath. That seed was there for them. The seed was on this ground, but they chose to harden their heart. And I'm sure all of us know some people just like this. We've made ourselves hard to the Word of God. Next week, we want to look at the shallow heart, the divided heart, and also the good heart where the seed takes root and brings fruit. One last point before we close. One thing we have to remember about the story. The seed went everywhere. The seed went to the hard heart. The seed went to the shallow heart, to the divided heart. And the heart that was good that took in the seed and had the root and bore the fruit. And so we see with God's word today. God's word goes out. The world we live in today, everyone has access, if they want to, to the Word of God and the best story ever told. Salvation, full and free. And I'm wondering today, what does your heart look like? Is it hard? Is it shallow? Is it divided? Or is it good? Where the Word of God can permeate, can fill into that heart. That would be my wish and prayer for you, that really that you could bring fruit. And next time on this program, we'll go into more detail of these last three pieces of ground where the sower seeds the seed. You've been listening to the Gospel Message Radio Ministry. My name is Wes Hepner. Our website is gospelmessageradio.com and our email is gmmradio at sasktel.net. I wish you a wonderful week, God's blessing, and may you 
Be a sower that sows the seed.